Hey, this is Jack at Anatomy Zone, and in this tutorial, I'm going to take you through the anatomy of the infraspinatus muscle. The infraspinatus is located on the posterior aspect of the scapula, and it forms one of the four rotator cuff muscles. And those rotator cuff muscles are all found deep to the more powerful superficial shoulder muscles on the scapula and the upper humerus. The infraspinatus originates in the infraspinous fossa, and that's located on the posterior aspect of the scapula, inferior to this, which is the spine of the scapula. From its origin, the infraspinatus then traverses the lateral border of the scapula and moves around the posterior aspect of the proximal humerus to insert on the greater tubercle, which is on the lateral aspect of our proximal humerus. There are three facets on the greater tubercle and the infraspinatus attaches to the middle facet, with the supraspinatus attaching to the superior facet and the teres minor inserting on the inferior facet. And this is remembered with the acronym SIT. In terms of its action, in isolation, the infraspinatus muscle creates lateral rotation of our arm at the shoulder. However, in real terms, this muscle works with the other rotator cuff muscles to produce dynamic stability at the shoulder joint. So it means our shoulder remains stable whilst we're moving our arm. The infraspinatus gets its nerve supply from the suprascapular nerve. So this nerve arises from the upper or superior trunk of the brachial plexus. And that's typically formed from the ventral rami of the fifth and sixth cervical vertebrae. The suprascapular nerve then from its origin runs underneath the trapezius muscle to reach the suprascapular notch. And after the suprascapular notch, it then gives off two branches, the superior branch, which goes to the supraspinatus muscle, whilst the second branch runs inferiorly to innervate the infraspinatus. The infraspinatus receives its blood supply from two arteries, the suprascapular artery and the circumflex scapular artery. The suprascapular artery begins from the thyrocervical trunk. So that's being extremely specific, and that then comes off the subclavian artery. So the suprascapular artery comes from the subclavian artery, but if you want to be very specific, it actually is the first branch of the thyrocervical trunk. The suprascapular artery from its origin then runs laterally and parallel with the clavicle and it descends onto the suprascapular notch to then move down to the infraspinous fossa where it supplies the infraspinatus muscle. The second artery is the circumflex scapular artery. So the circumflex scapular artery originates as the first branch from the subscapular artery. And that subscapular artery comes from the large axillary artery. The circumflex scapular artery from its origin then runs down the lateral border of the scapula. And as it runs to the posterior scapula, it actually anastomoses with the suprascapular artery, and those two arteries are the ones that are supplying the infraspinatus muscle. So that's the anatomy of the infraspinatus muscle. I hope you found this tutorial useful, and if you have, please click the like button, and don't forget to subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.